Well, I must say, uh, firstly, I was um, uh, grateful to the Almighty that um, I, um, I was able to witness yesterday. And many of us did witness yesterday. Very thankful to the Almighty God uh, for his, um, should I say, uh, protection of all of us that attended over the years. Um, it was a great joy to see that Ojiri Oba came again back after, uh, should I say, a break of two years because of COVID. Um, you can see despite the downpour, uh, people were still, we were turned out in mass. Um, it was good to see old friends, both home and abroad. Um, and uh, for me as a person, um, it was a joyous occasion. And then um, you took part, uh, active part in the session that we done years back. Yes. How did yesterday, what was different about yesterday? Um, what was different about yesterday? I don't think it, it kind of differed greatly, other than people were just excited, you know, to have Ojidoba back. Because um, I think we weren't sure whether it would happen or not. You know, given the position of, you know, what, what the issue and COVID and, and what have you, and also the security situation in the country. Uh, but um, I, I think overall, um, it was a great success. It was a huge success, and um, you saw the turnout, you know, in, in, in mass. And of course, it was good to see our cabbies there again. You know, many people were doubting whether I would be able to attain or not. You saw him there for hours, you know, welcome you know, his sons and daughters of each other land. And of course, and Vina. How do you always prepare for your participation in the job? Well, uh, it depends because the bit that has to do with the horse riding, mm -hmm. it's something that's in the family. And of course, uh, you may have noticed my stables when you came in. So my horses are here, you know, around the years. Okay, even where I lose one or two during the year, I quickly replace them. Even when I'm not around, if you were to ask my guide, he would tell you that the most important thing in this house is my horse. <laughs> Nothing happens to my horse. I mean, you know, at the moment, just one. I lost one recently, which you may, you know, a ghost, you know, recently, but just one. Um, um, his name is Niger. But from the United States, that was all. Um, so yes, um, we we of course you feed your horse well, you take care of horse, uh, your horse, and because I'm particularly, you know, when, when you sometimes you create a reputation for yourself that comes back to haunt you. Um, uh, one or two years in the past, I've ridden what would have regarded as um, standard, you know, good horse. Or good horses. Um, but later when I heard guys telling me on the field that ah, Baba, she mind you, you know, and, and this guy's telling me, if you look at the other horses around me, not as big as the ones that, but they felt that hang on, by a horse, any horse I ride should be even bigger, you know, than the one that I rode those two years. So, yes, my horse is very important to me. People know the kind of horses they'll see me ride. So, that, that expectation, of course, we then push it to me to make sure that my horse is in top. Of shape and ride. I'd ride. What's the name of the horse? Niger. Niger. If you ask anybody in their body and say Niger, they know the horse. It's been around for some time. And how did you feel when you moved into the Pavilion Islands? Um, like you know, I mean, of course, we'll ride into the Pavilion with drums, you know, people. Saying hello to you, we all wish us left, right, and center, and of course the family as well. You, if you may recall, that my dad used to be the one that you know would come behind me. I'll be in front, and of course younger, you know, family members, you know, would be in front of me. Of course, my dad stepped down about three, four years ago, and I wrote that particular and then he stepped down since. So oh, this is not, my dad is eighty-four. He actually stepped down when he talked 80. 
just like his grandfather stepped down and he called the chief and then took over. Um, I wanted to ask, um, does age have anything to do with being able to ride horses? Um, so is there a particular age you get to that you don't have to ride? No, stop. Stop right. right. There are reasons okay. uh, stop age. I mean, it's, it's whether you fit. Okay. You know? And I must say that I haven't seen any other family and I challenge anybody, at least in my own lifetime, as reading, you know, um, the way my grandfather rode up to he was 80. And it's the same thing with my dad. Even though he stepped down, the last ride, that you can go and check it on YouTube, you think it was a 16-year-old riding. He was 80 and he rode and people couldn't believe what he was doing with the horse. Now, he didn't wait until he couldn't ride at that level before stepping down. Okay, so he stepped down riding at the studio, but of course he will ride leisurely and enjoy himself and all that. Likewise, you know, he's owned that, my grandfather. Up to the point he stepped down, he was still the top rider, you know, obviously. You know, so I challenge any other, you know, uh, value family. So at that age, they will ride like that. I thought age did start riding. To be honest, uh, um, when you say riding, if it's just riding, okay. I can't even remember. I, I just know that from, maybe even from when I was two or three, they would have put me on I knew pictures were taken when my grandfather was alive and all that. But to start um, attending riding in front of my dad for, my, for Ujidoba, it was when my grandfather was still alive. Now, the age I can't, to be honest, I have to really think when that was, it's been over a decade. I can't say that for certain. Writing for series and playing for the scene that it's right. Oh, certainly. So, so how, certainly. You, you've got to be a good horseman okay. to be able to ride, uh, to be able to play in uh, polo. Because you need to be able to maneuver. Yeah. I don't forget you're going to top speed sometimes, mm -hmm. chasing the ball and all that. But the kind of ride that we do, as we do that, uh, is different okay. to the one that, um, you know, to the riding that you do for polo. Okay. The kind of dressage and, 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 and display and control, uh, you know, and the maneuvering of judo is quite different from what you do on polo. Polo players don't do what we do, yeah. you know, and vice versa, because the balancing on the back of the horse you know, is different. And even as a judo bar, the way we ride, you can see they also differ. Yeah. Uh, um, people know my kind of, my style of riding is different yeah. to a lot of people's. So people have different styles. Right. Then let's talk about what has changed over you over the years. I know um, a lot of things haven't changed, but what do you say has changed in terms of the lifestyle, in terms of your attitude to life? And all of that? In terms of lifestyle and attitude to life, I must say I'm a lot more patient now. You know, I, that I know for certain. Um, Uh, we're doing okay. something here. So I must say, I hope, I hope we're, we're all right. All right. I must say, I'll take that again. Okay. Mm. I must say, um, I'm a lot more patient now than in the past. Um, a lot more tolerant than in the past. And of course, you know, when you grow older, and you then, you know, you're saddled with a lot more responsibilities, you know, leadership and all that. You gotta have those things. Uh, you know, otherwise, you know, um, can be very frustrating. You know, can be very frustrating. So, um, yes. And also, I'm a lot more uh, conscious, you know, about um, people's feelings. You know? Look, I'm as straight as they come. In my younger days, you know, if you're not straight, I give it to you. You know, forget about diplomacy. You know. But now I've learned that. I've learned that. And uh, it comes with leadership, isn't it? So, yes. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm a lot more, what? Um, um, what well, how will I put it? I think the patience and the tolerance is the bit. Of course, once in a while, you still see me go back to my, you know, my old, anytime it's there in the storage, I can pull it out anytime if it's required. You know, people, they want to cross yeah. the line you know, and you just need to remind them sometimes that like, you are on the street as well. You know, that guys, yeah, I was on the street, forget about all this. 
Yeah, so you just need to remind them. Let's go up. Yes. Okay. You still do um, the uniform service. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. The the uh, industrial tailoring business okay. is actually my dad's. Okay. Yes. Because I've supported him over the years. Yes, we're still there. Um, of course, the old man has killed down. Um, but boy, he's still there. I mean, of course, um, there's hardly any top Nava officer from past and present, from the Andrew Wade's time in the 1960s, you know, to the, to the Adelawas, you know, to the Koshonis, you know, to the to, to the Yankos and all that, to my, who I call my godfather, you know, say you do much of a, uh, another star, you know, uh, you know that he, you know, one way or the other. You know, yes, you know, he's still there, but we've scaled that. He's old, he's, he should be retired, he's retired. But sometimes, you know, people, and of course, you may also um, know, I'm not sure, that we do provide, um, produce um, graduation downs. You know, we designed the one from last for last year from scratch. Um, of course, University of Nigeria, you know, University of Lagos, we do all those. Um, yeah, of course, the Air Force from Palestine, even before Palestine. So, yeah, we do, it's still there, but we, the approach is different. Unlike before, and that's the thing, uh, but then before, where we had, um, a should I say, a bunch of guys. Sitting there, that would pay their salaries, and of course we carry that overhead. We have had to change our approach, so it's a it's a case of um, to the basis of look, is when those jobs come in, we just call our guys in, they deliver the job and they go away, so we don't have to necessarily carry overhead. Which you call you mean like? I'm into project and management consulting, as you know. Um, I do provide particularly for the public sector in the UK, um, whether it's health sector, whether it's housing, whether it's um, revenue generation, or you know where organisations are struggling or where they want to improve their performance, I get invited in to come and have a look at the business, look at the operating model, look at what we can bring in to help them achieve whatever their business objectives are. You know, as you also know, uh, nowadays, um, technology is at the center of all of, a lot of improvements, particularly automation, you know, to make things happen quicker and more accurate. So, so essentially, that, 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 that's what I do. Of course, I, um, I do provide uh, training in Nigeria as well around project management. I do twenty one Prince too. Um, I've had, you know, the opportunity uh, and I must say this, and this is not political, please don't get me wrong. Um, in the East, in Alhambra State particularly, um, I've been invited in to support their the public sector, train some of their you know, sort of podcasts there. Even attended the um, university to facilitate a session for Piano's um, team at their ESCO Community and Human Services Commission as another. I don't know him, but I'm sure what I did during all this time Somebody there felt they needed to invite me to, to, to help them get a session on expectations of political appointees. Yeah. You may also recall that I also had a stint at the National Assembly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, legislative aid. Um, yes. Uh, also chaired when this was during uh, David Mark's time, when they were doing constitutional review, national constitutional yeah. review, I chaired. The committee set up for the state. So the state national council, national review committee, actually chaired that committee, who, and which of course we consulted. You know, the three senatorial zones. We did the state one in Abeokuta, and then presented. I then presented the um, the Ogun state position on what we feel of those areas we feel should change in the national constitution. Um, and if I, come, if I remember, one of the things we really wanted which our KBC was keen on, which was part of what I presented, is the need for us to have uh, Ijebo State, with Jebodi as the capital. Uh, that presentation was done 
at the, what do you call it, the airport hotel in the cage and of course the, uh, of course the, all the senators and all of them, Southwest, you know, were there. I remember clearly that Ijebu State was one of the major things we asked for. Uh, we also pushed for autonomy of local government, and that's very, very close to my heart, personally. And I know, particularly because I know what the can to deliver. And I'll come back to that if there's opportunity. Then another key thing was we supported the uh, special status for Lagos. And I remember saying to the crowd then that, uh, look, you know the saying in Lagos, uh, apart from the fact that my mom is a Lagosian, I love the back of it, uh, that, you know, this, they told you about the and you get it. Ojo I then went on to say, look, told you about Teko, Ojo Niti Nigeria. You know? If Lagos prospers, um, prospers, Nigeria will prosper. Just like, you know, in Getty's Marina. You know, mm. if Marina prospers, proper, uh, prospers, Lagos will prosper. You know? So, Lagos, you know, if Lagos prospers, Nigeria will prosper. So really, that special status for Lagos, you know, that was something that was really, 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 really preached. How come yeah. we never went into politics with Lagos? How come I don't even know into politics? <laughs> Many people have asked me that question over and over again. I get it almost every day, severally. And my friends, some of my friends are still, they're convinced that, no, it must happen. Well, look, I don't need to be in politics, you know, before I make my impacts, you know, felt. I make myself available to whoever is in government or in politics to say, look, if you need support, if you need, I will support you. Of course, aspirants, candidates, I'm close to many of them, many of them are my friends. I do share my little knowledge or experience about, uh, you know, sometimes people who say, ah, you know, things got to change. You know, things are not right. Things are, you need to ask do the people you're talking to that you want them to change things, do they know what good looks like? Do they know? When you say, look, you want things to be better, you want things to be good, do they know what good actually looks like? Okay, if they know what good looks maybe they do know. Do they know how to actually deliver? So that's another step entirely. Okay, you may say, okay, you want what? Um, very good public sector. Or you want what? Good health, you know, uh, system. Okay. Do you know what a good health system looks like? They'll tell you what they know. Is that really it? Okay. For those that may even then know, maybe they've attended health services in the UK, in the US, and all that. They've said, they just, they just in a little bit of it. Do they know what it takes to deliver that? You know, right. Do they know the various structures, you know, networks, you know, uh, interdependencies, and what have you from different angles that we need to come together to deliver, you know, a good health service? You're going to be asking those questions. So what I say, you know, to these guys, to my friends, you know, that are in government, that look, let's do it. Why don't you try this? I do offer my advice where I can. But to go into full-time politics, uh, I think uh, from the days of my dear friend and brother, uh, who I still miss to, to this day, uh, Dipo Dino. Um, after Dipo's death, I wasn't encouraged. Uh, I still have my laptop. I showed one of the two guys some of the emails Dipo and I shared in terms of their strategies. And Dipo had huge plans for the state, huge. You know, and um, anytime I think about it, it still hurts. It still hurts. Um, but, um, you know, God loves him more. In Lagos, in Idumago, Idumago, Princess, you know, in Lagos, Lagos Island. Uh, of course, we then moved to a Putemata, just like when you go here, Putemata, then we moved from a I, I, I attended um, St. Paul's, what, Mount Carmel, not really, so and then St. Paul's. From school to the center. I've been from there at St. Gregory's College, Ikoi, yes. um, as well. Then moved to Bagada, yeah. And of course, UK, Port Harcourt, and all. I never lived in Port Harcourt, I served in Port Harcourt, I moved 
Southern Port Harcourt. And of course, after my service here, um, UK. Yeah. What's, what were the courses you do? I did accountancy at the Federal Polytechnic Lab, and for some reason, somebody in that school at that time felt there was a need to teach computing. All my friends that attended, that did accountancy, none of them did computing as part of their course. Should I take this break? Uh, sorry, because of the lights, I thought, you know. So what should I keep? You're talking about... Um, yeah, I attended um, Federal Polytechnic at Laro, did accountancy there. For some reason, somebody in that school at that time felt there was a need to introduce computing into accountancy. You know, of course, um, uh, of, there was only two computers, and the whole school relied on two computers. So we had you had to book half an hour, fifteen minutes, and all. That. And those of us that had a little, you know, if you can manage relationships well, you know. So we got on with the lab guy. He would give us extra time. So I took to that, and I'll tell you that something that was the singular critical thing that helped me when I got to England. I passed did my NYSE pass out. Went to England. Third week, I was working in the finance department in UK. And the acid test for the interviews I did was my ability to use the keyboard as a computer keyboard. I did it with all the other rainbow guys. Two of us were separated and were given a special project to work on. Yeah, and it was because of my ability to use that. I will, I will, I will say it anywhere. Whoever had that foresight, that's good. That time. And I love the day. What sort of person am I? What sort of person am I? Yeah. Wow, it's difficult to say. <laughs> it's easier for other people. Yeah. What's your name? Mm. My thoughts. Yeah, thoughts. My thoughts. Well, I'm as simple as they come at the same time, you know. Um, uh, you know, like, uh, I always have a line. I'm as simple as they come, you know. I'm all, you know, I want to believe. Embracing one, you know, I don't like cheating, that's all. Um, I, I, you know, I, um, I'm very happy. You know, I love helping, supporting people whenever I can because I believe that if you have, if you have an opportunity to impact on somebody's life you know, positively, you support them. You know, if you have, it's an opportunity. Uh, and people say, if you have the grace, you know, like let's say, you know, and you don't do it. For me, I believe you've lost out. It's lost out. It's an opportunity. There are people that will have those means. You know, but they won't do it, you know, and um, they don't have the opportunity to actually do it. But if you have the opportunity, I have the means and where without, and you do it, wow. For me, it's a huge investment. You see, <laughs> you don't do it, you lose. You lose. Somebody else may do it, you know, later, you know, or not, but is you the one losing? It's not adding to you. Not giving that help or support is not adding to you. You've just lost an opportunity to impact somebody's life. I don't even need to think about how, whether you're going to meet after or whether they're going to have anything to. You don't need that. Just do your bit and just forget. You know. As, as part of, you know, I did deliver a lot of workshops and, and training and all that, depending on what the subject matter is. But one of my favorite lines, which I, I believe I took from, I don't know whether it was Jim Rohn or Zig Ziglar, I can't remember which of the guys. I said, look, if you help enough people in life get what they want, you will eventually get what you want. Mm -hmm. I hold that so dearly. If you're still struggling to get what you want in life, perhaps you haven't helped enough people. But if you help enough people in life get what they want, you will get what you want. Tell us a bit about your cultural commitments. Um, I, I know you come to the whole lot. Yes. Um, I don't know if you remember the... Okay. I think, okay, I'll start like this. Um, of course, you know my family, I have a family, you know, from one of the... Uh, but in terms of me personally, um, of course, I was very close to my grandfather, um, learned a lot from him. 
um, a lot of history. You know, you know what I mean? Somebody just sent me, incidentally, just this morning, where my great grandfather was buried. Just sent it to me on WhatsApp. Just this morning, yeah. And okay, I presided over the Ijebu community in the UK for about five years, okay. some 15 years ago. You know, we have the polarization in the UK. I was the president for about five years. And of course, the Nigerian Commission at that time was school over Kolade. Uh, I was already, you know, president for Kolade King. Uh, but, you know, and during Kolade's time, they set up a group called, you know, a structure called Kanuk. Central Association of Nigerians in the UK. So basically, each state had a representative. Yeah. So I represented Ogo State. So anytime they wanted to consult, you know, with the um, you know Nigerians in the diaspora living in the UK, they come through, you know, with that group, the kind of group. So I, 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 I was leading the Ogo State. Uh, uh, but, uh, so yes. So of course, you know, if you're married, if you're the president of, I didn't say Jabu Day, Ijebu people, which basically is Jabu Day, Jabu Bo, even Korodu members were there, they were all Ijebu, the whole of Ijebu. Yeah. Of course, at the time, I felt that, look, we needed to decentralize that. Because if you think about it, you know, you do a project in one Ijebu town or two this year, given the number of Ijebu towns and villages, you know, well, when are you going to go back there and make an impact there? So I felt it was, it was um, uh, may, may more impactful to decentralize that and then have the various, you know, towns in to set up their own, you know, uh, groups so that they can impact directly. That was when we set up in Jabugu and actually did the first election and I'm going for them, which uh, Kazim Arudashula, the late, you know, Mr. Arudashula's son, became the first president. Yeah, that was how we you know, set up others. As well, you also have the title of RA. Yes, tell us a bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in two forms. The first RA, the well, one part of it is the um, the one I've just told you about mm -hmm. the you know, president of the Global Association mm -hmm. and all that. So, of course, when I'm being introduced in the UK or even here and all mm -hmm. that, any member. You know, you have a lot of Jebu um, people in diaspora. They call me Are Are, which is president. So the Are Mo Jebu Lapapo, which is the translation of President Jebu Association. The other Are is um, um, the one given to me by um, uh, Dr. Aladi Jari, the Alaye of the Fon Alaye, uh, as the Are Kori Wolu of the Fon Alaye. So those are the two. I don't want to talk about the artists for too much titles because my dad doesn't just speak to her. Too, too many of us. If you're not, um, doing business, not, um, consulting and training, what, what do you do in your leisure? In my leisure time, what do I do? I try to rest because, you know, I attend meetings for hours and I try to rest as much as possible. It's difficult. Even when I rest in my head, is working. Well, if I wasn't doing um, what I do now, as in project business consulting and all that, I'll be in show business. Why? I didn't do that. I just feel I have, it comes to me naturally in my early days at school, you know, heavily involved in organizing shows and events, whether it's the James Carnival days, you know, whether it's, um, you know, the campus band days, um, you know, all the dance routines, you know, my max, mommy max and whatever. Even till now, a lot of um, artists, you know, I do, you know, provide money to whatever, and some of them find it very useful. 